Hello, welcome back to this video. And today we're gonna to see how to not defend yourself against knife attacks. So I wanted to start by saying that uh, if e any altercation, any altercation with empty hands is going to be extremely complicated to defend yourself against because there's so many variations of the things that they can do that you have to calculate and kind of like guess. If we add to that the knife, everything is going to be way more complicated. Now, why? If you are in empty handed fighting someone and someone punches you, for example, and you cover yourself, you wouldn't necessarily take that as a bad thing, like that you understand that you can take that. If someone grabs you, for example, then yeah, someone grabs you, unless the person is pulling you away and moving you and you can't do anything. You don't take this as a threatening thing, right? And that is not something that happens with a knife. Every time you get touched with a knife, you're gonna get cut, regardless of how you get cut. Well, sometimes it's a superficial cut and not a big deal. Sometimes the person cuts you only on the um, clothes, but you have to assume that every, every time you're getting in touch with a knife, you're gonna get cut. Therefore, you're going to bleed. And that is important for several reasons. First, because that blood can go to certain areas, certain muscles are in charge of doing certain movements, particularly contracting or um, extending, and that can affect your capacity to grab someone. And that is already bad. But also the psychological effect of seeing your own blood getting out, or if you get a bad cut, and this is actually the worst, worst case scenario, you might bleed out and lose some conscience really quickly. And again, there's always a mix of both. Sometimes it's not only the loss of blood, sometimes it's the loss of blood together with being in an anxiety, semi-panic attack uh, moment in which you provoke that by just seeing the blood and again, being in that situation, you might actually faint it. So for all those reasons, the knife is way more complicated. Now for that, I have to always start by saying the same. Obviously, it's extremely difficult to defend yourself against a knife, uh, let alone to survive, let alone to be intact. That is almost impossible. So you have to assume that you're gonna get cut. But the important thing is knowing that you probably are gonna get cut because the same way that when you are in an empty-handed fight, you're gonna get punched or you're gonna get kicked with a knife, you're gonna get cut. Um, you want to minimize the cuts in areas that are uh, very life-threatening or very complicated for you to continue a fight. And that is going to be your face first, the neck, chest, mostly against stabbing, not so much against lash. Obviously, it's a terrible thing, but it's not as bad as getting stabbed. And definitely, definitely the belly. And I would say I would finish on the groin, although definitely you can go lower and even cut uh, the, uh, um, the leg. But Today we're gonna to actually study uh, things that can happen and, and bad defenses that you might commonly see uh, when defending yourself against a knife, two attacks that are going to happen on the waist and up, okay? So the first attack they would have is the attack, the slash coming a slash towards the neck or the face. First thing that most people, sometimes you might see is this, pushing away, blocking and kind of like pushing away. Now. There's nothing inherently wrong with uh, trying to block. In fact, obviously, it's better to block it than getting cut. But if you're gonna do this, you're gonna uncover underneath, and obviously the person is going to cut you. So first, again, you're going to assume that by doing this, you're gonna push the arm away. And then you're also going to assume, because for that to happen, and for that to be true, the person must only do one attack, right? And also you might be strong enough to push the person away. And again, those are two assumptions, but also you're assuming that the other person is not capable of reading your block, meaning this, and the person's going to continue the attack. But what if any of the things that I just said are not true? Meaning what if, for example, the person is stronger than me and continues, for example, this was not strong enough. That was the first mistake uh, and you still get, uh, can get cut. Second mistake is assuming that the person only has one attack. What if the person does a second attack and goes underneath? Then this is too late for me to do. And what if the person not even did that, but actually saw me doing that and faint the first one and went to the second one? Similar to what I just did, I'm gonna get cut. So one possible solution for that is basically get as close as possible to your body. So now you not only can use whatever you can generate with your arm, but you can actually push because your body now is engaged and connected. So if you look at it from the front, it's here. And I know what you're probably thinking, what, what happens with this area? You can curve it a little bit and kind of protect and go against the uh, form, and that is okay, but you don't need to push the arm away. In fact, it's actually easier for all the reasons that I told you. First, the block is still gonna be there, but the only difference is now I can redirect, that's the first thing, or I can block and check with the other one. And since this is still connected, 
if everything else fails, at least I can kind of like block it even if I get caught right here on my form, I can still do it much better, meaning getting uh, caught on my form than on my belly. And that is a worst case scenario in that solution. Um, but again, everything comes from that idea of not extending so you don't open this side. Now, similarly, we have a second um, kind of common block so you encounter, and that is actually very difficult to not only perform, but it's very difficult to respond against a follow-up attack, and that is the X block downwards. In this case, when you go down underneath and you block with two hands. For the same reasons. First, you're going to assume that this is going to be so powerful, you're going to add so much power that the other person is going to not only stop, but it's going to be hurt enough so the person won't be able to continue with any attack. And that is the first assumption. Second assumption, as I said before, the person is not going to read you and the person is just going to attain with one attack. But again, what if any of those things are wrong? The same as I said before, the person can follow up with any attack like a slash to the face. And similar to what I said before, when you do this, you are so far away that if the person changes, it's going to be difficult for you to reach the hand on time. You're still going to be hit. So. A possible solution for that is rather than blocking with two hands, you can block with one and redirect towards the other side. That is a possibility. As you can see, this hand is still here, so I can redirect. And that does the same thing, meaning I'm going to block and I'm going to kind of move the uh, hand farther away from my body and probably hurting the other person. But at the same time, I leave these just in case. So. I have to, for example, in this case, check the other hand, like the other hand might come back, meaning it might be one and two that I can check much easier as I move this hand up again, one, two, and then this hand is already ready. So as you see, it's much easier for, for me to do that than if I fail here, the person moves, and then I don't have anything because this is already close enough, so nothing else that I'm going to do is going to be efficient. Now. That is the second uh, common block that I saw that uh, could be problematic. The third defense that I'm gonna teach you today is something that I actually teach, and I teach within this context, because this is a, value, a valuable movement, and this is the bread and butter of Filipino martial arts defense, and this is redirecting down into the side and redirecting with this side of the form, and not this one, because obviously when you get cut here, the muscles that are in charge of trapping are going to be right here on this side, and when you get cut, your capacity to grab the person is going to be minimized. But if you get cut here, you can still grab, but you cannot extend. Now, that is more theoretical than anything else, because if you get cut here, you're still gonna be bleed a lot. But again, that, that point is kind of true. You're gonna redirect down into the side, but as I said before, this has a context, and the context is, I have to match the side and the height of the attack, which means I'm gonna go, opposite hand in the mirror, and I'm going to match the height, and I'm going to go down into the side. But what happens when the attack goes lower? In this case, my form cannot match that height unless that I lower my body, which means that a person that is going to go quickly, that is doing that, I would have to actually go low and try to match at the same time. As you can see, it's very difficult to time that because the time that takes me to go lower is going to be much, much, much longer than the time that a person has to do this, because the only person needs to do is just move the hand while bending my knees and getting to that position and getting my form to that place might take me longer. So what can you do? Well, there are two different options for that. First, obviously, you can still do the same thing that, you, that I was telling you before about like, kind of like redirecting as if you're doing a block, like this is a possibility, that's okay but you're not going to focus on meeting with the form and down into the side. In this case, it's more of like a blocking going downwards and towards the side. But it's actually easier for you to use the same hand in the mirror, just power it towards the other side. As you can see, the other hand is still here just in case, in particular because you can not only punch, which is a possibility, but you can actually push that away and check just in case. So again, this is an alternative to that redirection. The following one and the last one that we're gonna see is Try not to grab uh, right away. So timing trapping someone is extremely difficult. Imagine trapping someone's hand as someone is trying to punch. Imagine a boxer punching you with full speed and you efficiently grabbing the hand and retaining the hand. That is probably what would be required for me to do the same with uh, the, uh, uh, in this case, with the knife. So as you can see, first problem, I thought, I, I hope that you just saw that one, is this, getting cut on your hands. 
And that can happen in too many ways. That can happen because before I miscalculated and I ended up putting my hands earlier, and this is a big, big, big problem. Second is, I actually grab it, but as the person slides back, it's cutting me for whatever reason. It could be because the clothes are slippery or because the person is not wearing anything, meaning that the, the sleeves are short and the person is sweating or because it's wet. For whatever reason, it's going to be very difficult for you to go and trap. That doesn't mean that you cannot trap, but it's always easier for you to block and redirect before you actually trap. And actually redirecting towards the direction that you want to trap. Like for example, if you want to do a trap from this side, you can actually trap against the other person. As you can see, I'm checking against the person. Or if the person attacks me from the other side, I can redirect with this and with this hand, I can trap. So again, it would be this. So it's easier because I block it first and as the person continue, I redirect and now is when I trap. Because every time I redirect, I'm buying time and I know at the same time where it is. So it's easier for me to kind of trap. But even if that is the case, grabbing, particularly grabbing a knife, it's extremely difficult. As I said before, the person can be slippery. And anytime the person can pull back, if the person pulls back in the, and the dagger only cuts in one side, like in this case, you might be lucky because this is not gonna cut you. But what if the other person has a double bladed? Uh, in this case, the double bladed or the double side blade is gonna cut you when the person comes back. But that is not the only case scenario. What if I'm going to trap you now so you can trap anytime? So rather than doing this, rather than actually facing in that direction, what if I perceive that and I switch right away because I'm afraid of cutting? All, only this maneuver is required for me to cut the other person. And as you can see, it's not something necessarily that I have to think about. This might be instinctive. I have a weapon in this case and I want to stop but I don't want this weapon to be trapped. So what do I do? I move it. So I'm gonna move it, because I don't want it to be trapped. And as you can see, it's as easy as moving the, uh, the knife, and it's going to be extremely easy for me to cut the other person in the hand. So for all those reasons, again, trapping, even if you do it with the blocking first and redirecting and trapping at the end, is actually very difficult. Uh, just to finalize this, I would actually advise you to focus more on redirecting and, for example, in this case, redirecting and check like this or redirecting and check like this than anything else because that can actually not only push but also have certain control for a follow-up, for example. Or that check can actually transform into a punch on your own. That is actually a slightly easier. Same from this side. I can be here and I can uh, punch rather than, than uh, focusing on, on checking. But again, the ideas behind all of that is to be mindful that you have to protect your center as much as you can first, and the rest, it's important, but it's not as important as protecting the center. So again, as usual, I hope that this is useful. If you like this video, please share it and like it and subscribe if you can. Thank you so much again for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Ush.